So in today's video, I'm going to explain in very simple terms, Polkadot 2.0, some of the main functional changes, not many of them, just the one big element that I think is going to be a game changer to enable you to understand what Polkadot is. I have included a screenshot at the, the back of this video, essentially, of all the other functionality stuff, the very, very buzzy words, etc., and a couple of drawings, etc. But this just gives you an idea of what's going to be changing when this new version comes out because it can be quite confusing to a lot of non-holders and also holders in terms of the change. But what I will say, please watch the full video from Dr. Gavin Wood on Polkadot Decoded. It will majorly help you understand it versus me because I'm not very good with my explaining and technical knowledge, so I do apologize. Anyways, let's get into it. So the current state of Polkadot is, I will say it's not great in terms of how it works. Okay, this is what's going to change. Good. So leasing, slots, parachange, you've probably heard of all these crowd loans. They are all getting put in the bin, essentially. So parachains, wording will change. They're just going to be projects on calls, core contracts. We'll come back to that in a second. Now, how does it work now? You raise a lot of money, you market it, you win an auction, you get the slot for two years. Bing. But they cost a lot of monies, right? The barrier of entry is going to majorly change here because they're going to scrap it. Gavin has already said he's going to have it low barrier entry in terms of cost to enable projects to function better, to enable them to get better revenue mechanisms and not having to worry about raising millions of dollars to win a slot for two years. This is where it becomes very adaptable, very flexible, and ultimately a much better project for everyone because there's no big dumps, there's no big emissions, there's no problems. It also allows smaller term developers to come in the game, which is huge, right? We want little people to deploy code as innovation and it could become pretty awesome, right? So all of this will come a bit more apparent in a second. So the main element change is turning parachains or blockchains, whatever, into space applications, right? More space, more people, more network effect, better barrier to entry. They're going to be selling calls. Now imagine Polkadot, and this is why I say to you, watch the full decoded, it will explain it in more detail in terms of what they've got as a big supercomputer where you can have up to five and to a thousand cores, which is what they're aiming to achieve for sale. <laughs> That's kind of the game, right? Any project can buy one of these cores, providing they can communicate with the language, right? The XCM and the, the code base of Polkadot substrate as well, right? So you can imagine any project can go, I can just buy one of those and work in an interoperable way with multi-chain on Polkadot, right? That is already one big plus. Now it's also a plus for any project that wants to start out. You can buy it in two very simple ways. Wholesale, you can bulk buy for a number of months and you can just buy them at a set fixed price. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt and off you go, right? You have got a functional blockchain that will work as a parallel relay throughout the Polkadot ecosystem, getting all that shared enterprise of the security, the governance, and obviously the messaging service, which will help you communicate with other blockchains, right? There's also another way, <laughs> instant. Instant is the king because this will enable more flexibility and more fluidity with projects that are getting busier and more notice because obviously throughput will go up um, and it could get very, very bloated very quickly. Now, the latency of Polkadot isn't great, but this is where these cores come in. You can maybe have one project and it can have four cores, making it four times faster than having just one core. I hope that makes sense because that will enable that flexibility. But the one thing you can do with these cores as well, which was explained very well by Gavin with some color squares, was the ability to have multiple projects on one core. So if you've got a smaller project, you can maybe share that with two or three other projects, which is huge, enabling that space to go further. It's going to become a very big space to enable development and functionality of a very, very strong, secure network to harbor everyone because no one wants to raise billions. 
No one wants to do marketing. No one wants to be a part of a certain framework that can be restricted. This removes all barriers of entry and it's a really great step forward in my opinion. So one thing that this gives us, and it's very important that we note this, it really is, it's application user centric. Now, one of the biggest things that I have certainly as a holder is a lot of people come to me saying it's really hard to get used to it. It's it's a lot of functionality problems. There's not many wallets. There is, there's loads of wallets, but people don't really look to see. It's also the same for the developer. The idea is, is to be user application centric, essentially, right? Application based. Now, as Gavin would explain, this is really good for the small term developer who wants to just run some code and not be kind of, oh my God, I've got to run an actual real project here to get this out there. Ooh, I don't want to do that. So this generates that network effect much easier. And when we talk about space and we talk about how one single core can work for different people, whether it's going to be used at certain throughput points or it's going to be divided or shared, whatever you want to call it, it's a huge step forward for any blockchain, right? You think about it, how hard is it to get into most blockchains with, you know, limited factors, right? Even getting onto Ethereum can be quite hard, competitive. You know, you have got some drawdowns with Ethereum for obvious reasons. The security isn't as good. The speed, the gas fees, etc. right? So moving forward to enable this for most projects to just jump in without having to worry about it is going to be absolutely massive and also generate that network effect. Now, one of the biggest drawdowns as well, what I've often talked about is smart contracts that able to run on Polkadot as a native layer because it's a layer zero, right? A lot of the parachains do as layer ones, which is fine. But one of these big elements of user centric is the fact that Polkadot itself can separate its own user interface, staking model, governance model, right? Even the XCM, whatever, you know, they can separate these into cores to make the network even better. But also these cores can run smart contracts. So we may well see, not confirmed fully yet in terms of how this will work, fast, efficient, cheap smart contracts running also on Polkadot, which will generate revenue. One of the biggest things that people come up with when they criticize Polkadot is revenue. There's not much revenue because it's a very different model versus obviously Ethereum. You imagine how much money the Ethereum Foundation makes and all the Ethereum network, etc., even projects through gas fees, right? We don't have that with Polkadot, right? We make money differently. The money maker will be through calls, but also if a core in the ecosystem of the family of Polkadot for the functionality of it can run also smart contracts, that could be huge not to mention the staking side of it. Staking could become faster and more efficient. The governance could become better if it's all on individual cores, which right now it's not. And that's hugely important we note that. So that's going to be one other change too. Other changes that I am aware of as well is obviously on this list to the side of me, right? There's a lot of stuff here. Now I'm not going to go through it a lot of it's interesting. There's a few little diagrams as well that are going to be floating around to in a second, but there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of technical jargon that you need to get your head around. The main thing I wanted to talk about is the fact of the, the shift between the cores and how the leasing model is going to totally change, which is more for the user and the YouTube community, because this is kind of you. I don't imagine you're going to be building projects anytime soon, right? But for functionality of Polkadot itself, it's hugely important that you get used to the idea of it. Now, I've often talked about Polkadot as being one of the best blockchains around. And I think for me personally, I think this kind of cements that as something that has changed. Now, the one thing that I've not fully mentioned yet is Polkadot, in my opinion, is probably one of the more decentralized blockchains out there, but it's also forkless. Forkless is huge because this enables change, it enables, you know, to adapt and to amend potential flaws in its chain to become better. You can't reverse a blockchain, you can't go back. You can change stuff, but sometimes, most of the time in blockchain, depending on what generation they are, you cannot do it because you've got to fork it. You've got to fork the network, hugely problematic. But with Polkadot, you don't have to do that. You can amend and change and adapt. This is a huge project that's going to change. Now, 
Core One, essentially, Polkadot 1.0, isn't fit for purpose. They've identified that, they've spotted that, even throughout the time when they've brought out Parathreads, which is going to be a huge change as well. That has changed the thinking around how this project is going to work and why it's going to get better, right? So I hope this video has explained the main functionality of the cores, which I think is the huge thing to make it more agile, more cost effective for users, for developers to generate more network effect, more interest within the ecosystem, because it just makes sense as a user, as a developer, as a purchaser, right? But even for us trying to understand it, it makes it easy to differentiate between a layer zero in terms of how restricted it can be into a layer one, which is obviously a parachain, but all the other stuff that can be also brought on with those projects, but also other spaces, cores, information, relay, whatever it may be, right? That can be sent throughout these much quicker, more efficiently, and hopefully cheaper. But anyways, that's my waffling done. I hope this video has explained it. If you are new around here, it would be nice if you can like the video and also subscribe. I will be doing more videos related to this topic soon. And yeah, check out my Patreon. There's a seven day free trial. Yeah, I do extra videos and more information about Polkadot is usually on there. But watch the video that is on the screen, okay? It's a bit of a price prediction. It sounds mental, but when you use Fibonacci, it's actually pretty realistic.